Hello, Father Viewers. It's Father Ryder here today with another video. Today is kind of like a book chat, but not really because I'm not going to call it that because I don't know. First books in me usually don't have book chat material just because I don't really expect much, so I don't have notes. But today we're going to be talking about the fact that I finally read Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I've been hearing about this book for years. I finally read it. And I'm really glad that I did, and I can't wait to pick up the second one. I really enjoyed it. It was hilarious. This book is about um, some thieves and criminals, basically, in this um, this place. And basically, they are tasked with doing this heist, this gigantic heist that no one's ever attended before. And they're going to do it. And it's great. It was a great book. I like the character. I love the characters. They're hilarious and great, and I love it. And I'm really excited to continue this duology, um, even though the last one is known for its depression and killer of souls. So, without further ado, we're going to talk about this book. I have some um, notes on my phone because that's what I did, but then I was reading um, and then decided to just doggy or a whole bunch of times when I saw something that I liked. So, when we met Jesper and all of them, he was talking about how this dude, if he messed up his pistols, because his prized possessions are like his pistols, if he messed up the pistols, he like find him and shoot him or whatever and then they were like uh, kill a dude if you mess up his guns he shoot him in the chest and spell out the words forgive me and they told him he'd be dead halfway through forgive and he said it was to send a message what's the point of a dead guy with four written on his chest and I was just like <laughs> that was hilarious to me um Jesper really made the book because he was flat out hilarious um, and Ined is another character and she's basically like the, the spy of the group because she like moves really silently and stuff. So this one part she was sneaking up behind someone and she it said Ined came up behind one of the snipers and said I like it when men, when men beg but this isn't the time for it. We stand. We definitely stand that. So now um, we have notes inside and I'm pretty sure the first one is for my favorite ship. Matthias and Nina, I love them so much, and I um I can't wait to see more of them in the next book. Honestly, I took a quiz like I do before I start any series, basically that's popular enough to have a quiz on Buzzfeed, and I took a quiz and it told me I was Matthias, and I was like, wow, okay, I definitely do not attest to this. I have it on my phone, the screenshot, all that stuff, and I was like, this is definitely me. Then I went on the actual like Grisha birth site, and it said I was cast. So I feel like I should be, I could be both. So I'm not gonna like differentiate but I did cast did annoy me through the majority of the book Matthias is a character who I did like a lot better basically he um him and Nina had a lot of falling outs or whatever but these are just some scenes that I really enjoyed from them because they had a lot of them and I love them they're adorable and cute and I love them I'm pretty sure this is from the flashback because what happened was um they she was being taken to like this place or whatever and they were on a boat or whatever and they got washed up from the boat onto shore and um it was like a really bad accident or whatever but they were safe so they like had to save each other or whatever and they hate each other because he's tasked with like hunting and killing Grisha or whatever and she's Grisha so like it's not gonna work but like they start being really cute and it's just hilarious and um Nina is this person who is like she's a heart trender and she works in like this menagerie type place um but like not i don't think it's called that i don't, I don't know i forgot she um she can like mend your heart and like she can like control it like bring up the blood pressure and stuff it's really bad but could also be good so basically um she is really nice and confident and hilarious she loves food you know but uh she's really she has these comments that are like really like not racy but like suggestive and like matthew is a certain soldier you know he's not gonna stand for it but like it really flusters him and it's the cutest thing ever because then she enjoys him being flustered and you know i always stand that in books so this is one of the scenes and um she said something and she was like uh because they have to sleep next to each other obviously because they're like making camp they're like together all the time so like uh so <laughs> it's like yeah of course you hate sleeping next to me and then and <laughs> i feel it every morning because he always ends up near her when they wake up and then she and then matthews flushed bright scarlet why do you have to say things like that because i like it when you turn red we just have to uh stand we stand every scene that they were in i pretty much stand all of them because Nina is so, like, she's so great. I love her. They were talking about how they liked each other and stuff. <laughs> and, like, and he admitted to liking her. It's like, now is it really bad? And she was like, he's like, yes, it is bad because you're horrible. You're a Grisha. You're loud and you're treacherous. And he's like, and then she just was like going around him and was like, yeah, I'm, I'm beguiling you with my lies. It was just so cute. I love them. How I mentioned that, yeah, ended up betraying him later on, which is, I think, the next thing, yeah, because Matthew was getting triggered and was like, tell them, tell them how you betrayed me, and it was bad, but, like, she ended up explaining it, so it's all good. They love each other. We've been new. 
they started working together because this plan that they put into place, basically they have to go to this really, like, it's a really, like, guarded place called the Ice Palace, and basically their task was going to take someone out of the Ice Palace, and like, they have to go into a prison and stuff, and basically, Matthias and Nina both agree that the person that they're going to extract, who has, like, this virus that they were giving to the Grisha that made them really powerful, but also is, like, makes them addicted to it and eventually kills them, Nina doesn't want it because the Grisha are going to get hurt, and Matthias doesn't want it because Grisha can be super powerful and hurt him. So they both agree to work together and to kill the guy that they're going to get um, which is not the plan, obviously, but they were working together, so we stand. They basically, one of the parts of the plan was they had to switch out themselves for these other prisoners that were inside the wagon so they could get taken to the prison because they had to be in the prison to find the person. So they were doing this, and, um, <laughs> Nina was getting locked in a place, like, with the people or whatever, and then, uh, she, like, moved her neck or something, and then Matthews was getting all flustered and stuff, and he, he moved away hurriedly. And somebody, I don't know whose point of view this is, but it was like, so that was all it took to send the juice kill, because that's where the, uh, soldiers are called or whatever, scurrying and bring the boy back, because this whole book, they're basically talking about how he's just a soldier, he's not a boy anymore or whatever, because the prison broke him. But, you know, that's a lie. <laughs> so Cass actually did something that I actually really enjoyed and liked and put in this book. So, uh, basically, he was going through his childhood or whatever, and his brother died. It was really bad and sad and depressing. But, uh, so he needed work, obviously, because he's not going to starve to death. So he goes to this place, and he's like, I want a job. And they're like, sorry, we don't have any jobs. Um, we already have someone who does whatever he was trying to get applied for. So he literally found the person who had the job that he wanted and, like, really hurt them really bad so they wouldn't be able to work. And went back, and he was like, I want a job. And he had one. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> like, he would do whatever it takes. Honestly, I have to respect that, like, regardless. I thought that was freaking amazing. I just felt so, like, really great after that. I don't know. They were just being super cute because something happened, and then, uh, they were, see, that he said that he would always protect her or whatever, and now it was Matthew's promise to her, and she knew she should say something profound, something beautiful in response. Instead, she spoke the truth. If we make it out of here alive, I'm going to kiss you in conscience. And I just love them. Like, um, mm. I really ship them. I really want their happiness eternally. Eternal happiness for Nina and Matthew's 2K18. Well, 19. Well, 18, because I hope to read Cricket Kingdom in the next month, December, which is probably already December when this is going up. Van Eck. So Van Eck is this guy who is the father of one of the boys in the crew that they're going to do this heist with or whatever. And he kicked him out of the house or whatever. He said he left, but like he basically really disappointed him, which you find out at the end. And what happened was he was talking to all this mess. Like they met back up with him because he was the one who set them on the mission. So he met back up to, with them to get the money and stuff. And then he started talking about how, oh, he's so disappointed. His, he's so disappointing. He's this, he's this. And oh my God, this is, this book started pulling a throne of glass where it will like not tell you what the even the main characters plans were so basically they had a plan all along that we didn't know about so uh while he's talking all this mess they revealed that the guy who nina we know she's a heart trainer she can also change her appearance or whatever so she changed wyland his son's opinion i mean appearance appearance to look like this guy that they actually retrieved from the prison so he was actually standing right there listening to all the stuff his father had to say and then a whole bunch of other stuff happened at the end and it was really nice like I really respect this book for it's like heistiness I love heist in books and movies and tv shows it's just really nice um yeah so and then they took an edge which was horrible he took an edge because they took the prisoner that he wanted so basically Van X's whole plan is to make the Grisha the most powerful people ever and make the world chaos so that's nice can't wait to read Cookie Kingdom. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, you know, I had to pull out my gloves, my hat from um, Fairy Loop. So, I love you all. I hope you enjoyed me talking about this book and enjoyed this book as much as I did. I'll see you there with another video. If you're wondering where your vlog is at, I'll have a weekly vlog up. Just gotta remind people because they probably don't know. Love you all. I'll see you later with another video. Bye.